This morning we have the opportunity to sit down with Grover Norquist of the Americans for Tax Reform. Grover, welcome to Texas, and uh, thank you for talking to the readers of Texas GOP Vote. Yeah, good to be here. Recently, like in the last two weeks, you spoke before Congress about immigration reform. And in your opening statement, you said that people are an asset, not a liability. What does that mean, really, in terms of the immigration debate? Well, the debate on immigration is about would more people, more Americans, be a good idea or a bad idea? Uh, there's some who say, well, we should uh, not have more immigrants. And, and there really is an argument about how many immigrants we should, we should have. Uh, Anti-immigrant groups want either no immigrants or almost no immigrants. So when they say they're for legal but not illegal immigration, when you ask them about legal, they're not for increasing legal, they're for decreasing legal immigration. So at the end of the day, they're against immigrants, right. not fewer Americans, fewer people. Look, what built this country? And it's not just something people say to make us feel good about Statue of Liberty. This is 70 million people came over from Europe and three quarters of them came to the United States. Of, in all of the Americas, North and South America, three quarters came here. Uh, and very distinctive people come to a land of opportunity. People who want opportunity. Uh, and when they showed up, they were poor, they were diseased, um, and uh, they didn't speak English. Mm -hmm. And within a generation or two, you know, they were just doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. And every, uh, and so one of the questions you have, people say, well, if people come here, why they'll um, be a burden, mm -hmm. not an asset. Uh, the labor unions believe that more people coming to the United States will reduce wages. Well, when we had three million people in the country, we were pretty poor. We have a hundred times more, 300 million people, a hundred times as many people, and we're much richer. Why? Because people are an asset. They're not a liability. Malthus was wrong. The zero population growth people are wrong. They just think if, the, if another baby's born, oh no, now we have to divide the pie with one more kid. Well, and they only have a 10-inch pie, basically. They, yes. Not an ever pie doesn't get pie. bigger. And babies never grow up and create Apple computers. Mm -hmm. uh, when, in point of fact, they do. And immigrants do more of that stuff mm -hmm. than people who are born here. I don't know. There's actually fascinating new analysis of IQ, which says that the act of emigrating, immigrating, raises your IQ. Mm -hmm. but, um, I don't know, bright lights, big city, new language, stimulates everything and it makes you smarter. Now, Senator Rubio and, and the other senators have come out with a, a plan that many are calling amnesty. Uh, I think it's a great abuse of the word amnesty. You know, maybe if we had this debate in English and actually used definitions of words instead of trying to shut people up by screaming the word amnesty. Uh, we could have a meaningful discussion on this. But tell us a little bit about the plan sure. and, and why it's not amnesty. Sure. Um, plan says, first of all, we need to get control of the border. We have to have more security there. And so they spend four or five billion dollars working on those uh, areas. Uh, and one of them was to get some cell phone uh, antenna. Satellite uh, phone, basically. Is it satellite phone mm -hmm. on the border? Mm -hmm. Uh, so that people in very rural areas can connect to the police. Right. Somebody got killed a number of years ago. A rancher in southern southeastern Arizona, yeah. southeastern Arizona. And the critics of Rubio's bill ran out when the, when it came out and said that these were like Obama phones that mm -hmm. they were funding. Okay, mocking the death of a rancher right. in order to score political points against securing the border suggests the lack of seriousness that we're dealing with on the critics. Of, I don't mean the people want to amend. Right. I'm for amending the Gang of Eights mm -hmm. bill, the one Rubio put for. Rubio's for amending. Right. Uh, it, we're open to, so first of all, border security. Mm -hmm. Second of all, taking the 10 or so million people who are here and allowing them to earn legal status. Right. Now they're treated, if, if you are arrested, you're not here legally, you don't have papers, you have to leave the country and for 10 years be 10 years before you could apply mm -hmm. for a green card again. That's your punishment. Right. 10 year time out. Right. And in a lifetime, 10 years is a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody who's here and needs to earn legal status, wants to earn legal status, has a 10 year time out. 
mm -hmm. as if they'd been arrested. Mm -hmm. Okay, ten years, and then if you work the whole time and you make enough money not to be poor, mm -hmm. and you prove that you're not going to be a ward of the state, and you get no uh, welfare or benefits during that ten-year period, then you can apply for a green card and so on. Which in three or five years, maybe you could get to be a citizen. Which okay. basically so, puts you behind the line of you, you people that are in line right yes, now. Yes, exactly. All of the things that were legitimate concerns that were brought up in the past that people have had, this bill deals with that. Which is why when the critics of previous bills use the same argument, this is amnesty, for something that fixes all the things they claimed to care about, solves all the problems, they they say, here are my three concerns. Okay, we have thought we will do the border, we will, you know, you go to the end of the line, ten year, ten year timeout, no welfare benefits during that entire period mm -hmm. until you get to be a citizen. Um, and does some, and then it talks about future flows. What do we do about we need more high tech people? Mm -hmm. There are jobs that are going there are people who are living in Canada working for Microsoft because they can't get to the United States. Mm -hmm. There are people in India and Russia and China who wanted to work here and yet they they start companies in other uh, right. in other countries. So they could be here in the United States paying taxes. Hiring buying people, homes, hiring American citizens, creating work here. Yeah. It, it, you want to whine about outsourcing, and then you don't let into the country the people to whom stuff is outsourced. Um, so, and we need uh, people for to come work on ranches. And there's there's temporary work, there's seasonal work mm -hmm. um, that a guest worker program would be very helpful for. So, there's three things. How do you deal with uh, high tech guys, guest worker programs? And make them significantly larger, so that they can deal with what, we, what the economy needs, what we all need, um, uh, as and then border security and earned legalization for people who are here. If you have a felony or uh, uh, you've broken the law, you're kicked out. Okay? Right. But we will know in terms of security who's in the country. We'll know. We'll have IDs, and mm -hmm. we'll know when they leave, and they know when they're here. Uh, we'll, have, we'll be much more secure. To do this, biometric identification, fingerprints, right, and and that's and they everybody pays a fine mm -hmm. if you're going to stay. So calling it amnesty is is somebody says amnesty, they they haven't read the bill, they don't know what they're talking about, or they're fibbing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I hear it from some of the professional anti-immigrant people, so you know they're lying, they're not mm -hmm. ignorant of what's going on, they're just lying. They use it the way a twelve or thirteen year old uses a new swear word that they just learned. And because it gets such a rise out of everybody. But at some point, you know, you're too old for that. Mm -hmm. And at some point, it's not funny anymore. Mm -hmm. And you just turn them off. I think they use it the way the left uses the word racist as a, a tool to just shut you up because yeah. they think you'll be intimidated by the use of the word. Oh, it's amnesty. Oh, well, we can't talk about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. last time I looked, if someone someone's paying a, a significant fine for basically what amounts to a misdemeanor offense, mm -hmm. it's actually being present illegally in the United States is not even a criminal offense, it's just a civil violation. Uh, you pay a significant fine, you're going to serve anywhere from 10 to 13 years on, on probation, and that's amnesty. Yeah. You know, and at any point in time, if you mess up in there, you can be deported because of, you know, and again, they treat these people, the, the, the critics treat these people as if they weren't assholes. These people are working. These mm -hmm. people are working every day. When I go to work on Saturdays, that's who I see in and around the office buildings and, and, and work. Um, they have a tremendous work ethic and a tremendous attitude. And the other thing is, remember, every immigrant group uh, in this country, from when the Germans started sneaking into Pennsylvania mm -hmm. uh, in the 1600s, um, was criticized with all the same rhetoric that you now see against Asians and, and Hispanics. You mentioned earlier the groups, the, the professional anti-immigration groups, and I'd like to go more specifically into who those groups are. Groups like FAIR, Numbers USA, the Center for Immigration Studies. Yeah. Um, these groups have a very leftist background when you look at, at what's behind them. What can you tell our readers about those groups? Sure. Well, not only were they created by men and women of the left, mm -hmm. who were from the pro-abortion, zero population growth, radical environmentalist worldview, 
their arguments today are, are still those arguments. Mm -hmm. So they don't use conservative arguments. They take the labor union argument that more people means wages go down. Uh, not that there'll be more stuff created. They take the radical environmentalist position that total numbers of people are a bad thing, like the people were like pests, mm -hmm. uh, instead of created the image of God to create more things mm -hmm. and people. Um, they treat numbers, Center for Immigration, Security, and Fair. Each of these were set up as the other one got sort of outed for what it was. They'd set up some other group. But the control remains with the radical environmentalists, the pro abortion people. That's why numbers is called numbers, mm -hmm. because they're just worried about the number of people in the country. They think it's bad. Mm -hmm. When you have a child, they think you've done something bad to the country. They'd be happy with a million more abortions, or a million more car accidents, or a million fewer immigrants. Um, they really do view people like Malthus did. Mm -hmm. the, the, the economist was wrong. Um, and I mean, these folks look at uh, Paul El Elric, Eric, the, mm -hmm. the zero population right. guy, um, who told us that you know more people and we'd all starve to death. Mm -hmm. What they forget is more people, more solutions, more people, more good ideas, more people, more job creating businesses, um, and those left of center groups have come inside the anti environment, the anti immigrant group. And then some of them have pretended to be conservatives. Mm -hmm. Their arguments aren't Ronald Reagan, Jack Kemp, conservatism. Um, their reasoning isn't, and their goals aren't, which is why they don't mind that having loud anti-Hispanic, uh, anti-Asian voices mm -hmm. associated with the right is devastating politically to the Republican Party, because they don't care about the Republican Party, because they're not Republicans. Um, they're happy if the left wins. Mm -hmm. uh, the left really does want to shut down economic growth and have lots of abortions and have fewer people. And then the opposition, the 2007 immigration reform package that President Bush put together, was killed by a poison pill amendment, which would have ended guest worker programs, mm -hmm. introduced by Barack Obama. Interesting. Okay. Organized labor remains the group most determined to kill this. The phony, the anti-immigrant groups pretending to be conservatives do all the talking, but they don't pull any strings. Now, Professor Steven Steinleit with the Center for Immigration Studies, um, he came to Houston a few months ago and we videotaped his presentation to a local group. And his focus was on Mexicans. It wasn't on Hispanics, it wasn't on the Asians or anybody else that's, that's immigrant, it was Mexicans. Mexicans are, are lazy, Mexicans are not entrepreneurial, Mexicans are a burden on our society. These kinds of quotes that he was, was coming out with that. That seems really odd for someone with his background to be saying something like that. Um, it's sad, it's wildly inappropriate, it's un-American. Um, all we can say is people said the same things about the Chinese when they came over to work on railroads, they said the same thing about the Japanese um, came over to join our country, to the Koreans. They certainly said it about the Irish. I mean, horrible things were said about Irish Americans right. we now recognize. I wish there were more Irish <laughs> Americans who'd come over years ago. Um, Italian Americans, the Eastern European Jews, that were, that they said they had low IQs and so on. Um, his rhetoric against Mexicans has been said against every immigrant group in the country. There isn't any immigrant group in the country people say, yeah, I'm so glad they're here. I mean, <laughs> the guys who are here, sort of like being in a club, and they go, we don't want anybody else in our club. Uh, and yet, even with that constant refrain, the common sense of the American people overrode some of the nativist tones that have been there from Know Nothings and, and other groups. Uh, some pretty icky. Mm -hmm. uh, we're the most powerful, richest, stable, forward-looking nation in the world because we're the most immigrant-friendly. Those two go together. Mm -hmm. Japan is not the future because they don't do immigration. They can't grow. They can never have a, a, an understanding of the world or, or be a player in the world 
seen as anything other than just about them. Okay. Um, and they don't have enough Japanese to be in the weight class that you need to be in to be a mm -hmm. major player or to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. they, they, we have to defend them from getting eaten by their neighbors. Right. Um, China is going to, st China got fooled into the one child rule. Uh, somehow our radical environmentalists convinced them this was a smart idea. I think it was the CIA plot myself. But but China is actually going to be declining in numbers of people in China. Uh, it's going to get old before it gets rich. They're not going to have enough workers to take care of all the retired old people. Uh, Europe is, I hate to say gone, but going. You know, they're, they're declining in, in overall numbers. And they're not having more, enough babies, and they don't do immigration well. We do immigration very well in this country, despite the, the, the unpleasant voices. Um, better than any other country in the world, where we have 200 years, and that's what's made us strong. And look back at every immigrant group that people said things like that guy Steinleit was saying about Mexico. Those were all said about every group that came in, and they were always uh, you concluded your testimony at, at the Senate hearing saying you've spoken about the shining city on the hill all your political life. I don't know if I ever quite communicated what you saw, that it was a proud city built on rocks stronger than oceans, windswept, God blessed, and teeming with people of all kinds living in harmony and peace, a city with free ports that hummed with commerce and creativity. That I think that just encapsulates everything that makes this country great. You know, when you look at Houston right now, Houston is growing. We had 170 some odd thousand new people here. It didn't increase our, our soup kitchens. It didn't increase our welfare roles. We're building new skyscrapers, we're building new homes, and we're having a good economy because of those new people moving here. Absolutely, and that, that, that's Ronald Reagan's quote. Um, and we need to remind those people who think that somehow, speaking ill of them against Russia is a conservative position? No, it's not. Ronald Reagan, Jack Kemp, and in today's world, both President Bush's and Governor Walker, the successful governors, Bobby Jindal of Louisiana, Governor Walker of, uh, uh, of Wisconsin, Perry of Texas, are all open, immigrant-friendly folks and, and recommend policies that, yes, secure the border, but if you're going to have walls, you want to have large doors. Well, thank you for again for taking the time to talk to Texas GOP Vote, and we appreciate the access and hope to come see you in, in Washington. Do, your Wednesday do, morning look meetings. forward to it. Yeah. Okay. I think they called that the Grand Central Station of Conservatism. <laughs> <Let me> try. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.